Hi guys, welcome to my second video. Um, in this one, I'm going to be talking about how to save money on your travels. Uh, I'm sure I'll update this later uh, when I get more experience, especially. Uh, I'll have to make a new one when I'm traveling throughout my book. As far as here in the States goes, um, I already have a good idea. I've already done a little bit of it. And uh, so I'm here to give you guys some advice. Uh, well, let's see. First thing, as far as getting around, um, I mean, every everything comes down to what you really want. If it, it's all compromise, it's all give and take. If you want to have a cushy airline seat that you know you're gonna get there your time you want to be there, then I mean, there's not really it's, you're not gonna have the leeway of cost. It's it's gonna cost you. But uh I mean on the other end if you want to save a lot of money there are ways to do that and you're gonna you're gonna be giving up a little bit of luxury. But at the same time <laughs> you get to make meet some great people and have some experiences you're not gonna forget. Uh so <clears throat> that being said, uh one one great way to get around even though it does have its risks, is hitchhiking. And I know people are going to right off the bat be like, well, you know, that's dangerous. It's stupid. You're not going to get picked up. But I'm, I'm here to tell you, I mean, people do it every day. And they, to this day, not just back in the 70s, uh, there's a whole community of people who that's how they travel around. And they're, they're some great people and they, they have some great experiences. I myself have some great experiences hitchhiking. The first thing I'll tell you though is don't expect to get a ride right away. You know, you're gonna, you're gonna be spending some time standing on the side of the road and you won't know exactly when you're gonna get there, but you'll get there. Uh, so, and usually at no cost to you other than you know, some some great conversation. Uh, obviously, be aware of you know the feel or the vibe you get of the people offering you the ride. If it doesn't feel right, don't do it. Uh, <clears throat> but I mean, it's it's a good way to get around. And contrary to most people's beliefs, it's not illegal. Uh, but every every place does have its own laws as to where you can be when you're hitchhiking and whatnot. But every state, it's a it's very legal to hitchhike. Um, that's one way. Uh, now it doesn't really work so much with car rides. Uh, but if you were trying to take a boat somewhere or something of that nature. Usually you can go down to a dock and talk to, you know, various captains or people, even if it's a fishing boat, and find some way where you can work off a ride if they're going to the same place you are, or if you're willing to go to the place they are. Better, uh, but uh, <clears throat> and. You know, honestly, there have been times where I've been stranded at a rest stop or something, and you just talk to people and, and ask who's who's going in this general direction. Uh, that works a lot of the time, so you'd be surprised how much generosity is out there and how much people are actually willing to help you out. Again, I mean, it's not for... It's, it's, you want the cushy luxury and you don't want to ever feel embarrassed uh, or anything of that nature. But if you're willing to put yourself out there and, and you can save a lot of money. Um, I myself got from North Carolina to Boston, Massachusetts uh, one time for absolutely nothing. And... It was great. I got to have some great conversations, uh, meet some people I'll never forget. It was a good experience. Um, 
Now on, on to another topic, uh, sleeping uh, is pretty much generally your biggest expense if you're trying to stay in hotels all the time. Um, some great things out there are uh, couch surfing. I highly you know, recommend looking into that. Uh, it's just, there's websites out there and most of them, I think, like couch, couchsurfing.org or something like that. And uh, you find, you sign up for an account, you know, and you type in, you type in the name of the town you're in or trying to be in and uh, you'll find people willing to let you stay on their couch and they, they were on the floor or a spare room or whatever the case may be. But, um, you find that these people are doing it out of the kindness of their heart and also to hear your stories of your tales of your travels or what you know it's a good way to interact with people you normally wouldn't and uh so that's the first recommendation i'd make on trying to save money and staying somewhere uh again the same thing apply. Yeah, go with the gut feeling. If, if it doesn't feel like you really want to trust that person, then obviously, I mean, you know, just back out of the situation. But for the most part, uh, you'll have some great experiences, and it'll usually be free. Sometimes they'll even give you a mood, uh, 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 a meal or two, and um, they don't charge so uh, another great thing uh, not many Americans are familiar with it or if they, they are they think that it's you know over in Europe only and whatever but here right here in America and right here in home and across the world uh, there's plenty of hostels now if you're not familiar with what a hostel is it's basically a shared living space. You'll have one room with like eight bunk beds to sleep in, one kitchen to share, and sometimes you can find them for free. Uh, other times it's usually like eight to fifteen bucks a night, which when compared to a hotel room, you know, can be anywhere. A hotel room could be anywhere like 150, 200 a night sometimes. Um, so you save a lot of money that way and you come across other travelers and you know you can compare stories and get to meet new people and as long as you're willing to give up that luxury of you know having your own room then it's that I highly recommend that too um you know uh, usually they have lockers you can lock your bags in if you're staying for more than a day or whatever um, but generally, I mean, same thing. The same general advice is going to apply anyway uh, with any of the things I'm talking about. you got to trust your gut and be able to evaluate if you feel safe. Usually you will. But, I mean, if you don't, then don't risk it. Just back out. But usually, uh, generally speaking, I've stayed in quite a few hostels and uh it's a fun experience and it saves you a lot of money. Uh, the, the first one I should have mentioned, but I kind of skipped over, so I'll go back to that, is uh, honestly your friends. If, if you're going through Texas or staying in Texas and you have friends on Facebook that you act or wherever that you actually know, you know, don't just talk to people you add for a game. But if there's actually people that you know, why not, you know, see if you can stay with them for a day? Um, and also, I like to give my information out as far as, you know, my email and whatnot. To, if somebody gave me a ride and they like my, my story and they, they want to know about my travels, give them my email. Keep in touch with them, you know, and if... Some, they always won't. Sometimes they're just being nice and saying they will, but a lot, a lot of the times they will try and see what's going on with you. And, you know, if you keep people informed through email or Facebook or whatever of where you're at and what exactly you're doing, well, 
that guy George who gave you a ride in Louisiana might have a cousin in Texas and you might been keeping up with what's going on, you know, in, in your travels and he might get a hold of you and be like, hey, I called up my, my cousin in Texas and he said he put you up. So, I mean, that's a great thing too. And the friendlier you are and the more real you are with people about what you're doing and, you know, then you'll find that that at first might not be your greatest source of places to stay, but once you build up uh, people wanting to keep up with what's going on with you and, and friends, then you that, that will eventually, if you're traveling for a long time, be probably your best source of places to stay. Um, this next one I've never tried. But I've heard about it, and I'm sure I will try it at some point on my travels. It is called whooping. Um, basically, there's communities online that are uh, organic farms that you can work there and stay there. And they have websites dedicated to it. Resources are out there everywhere. Uh, like I said, I've never traveled that way. But I have heard good things about it, and I'm sure I will at some point. Uh, I myself have uh, gorilla camped, as they call it, quite a few times, and that's also free. So you got that. Um, other things, depending on where you're at, such as showering or other other things of that nature. Uh, I mean, if you're by a beach, you know. Shower with some swimming shorts on under the, the heat shower that's meant to wash off sand. Um, pay a couple bucks at a campground or something. They'll let you shower, you know. Uh, things like that. That great ways to save money. Um, again, some people will be self-conscious and they'll think that they're feeling like a bum or whatever. And it won't be for them. Uh, but if you can get past that and move on from that, I mean, you, just the loan of what I told you, you can save thousands and thousands of dollars, you know, or hundreds, depending how long your trip is. But still, it's 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 a good bit of money. Um. Now. There are other other ways to cut corners out there. I mean, instead of going out to a restaurant and eating a fifteen dollar meal, you know, uh, get some get some like cheap local food. Like, it, if you're in New York, get a pizza or a hot dog from a street vendor. Uh, it's not as big of a difference here in America. But across the world, and still to some degree here in America, street vendors is usually the cheapest form of food out there. Um, I mean, you buy your own groceries or whatever, it's usually pretty costly. Uh, you go to restaurants, it's usually pretty costly. Now, one thing that almost every long-time backpacker knows about is you are going to want to have some food in your backpack. Because you're not always going to be in cities, you're not always going to be in town, um, and ramen becomes a backpacker's best friend. It's super cheap. It fills you up. You know, it doesn't have all the vitamins and stuff you need, but that's why you bring some multivitamins with you, and uh, it fills you up. So, and you could cut corners on food like that too. Um, there's all kinds of things out there, and I'm sure I haven't covered them all, and I'm, I'm sure there's many more suggestions, but the, these few things alone are some things I've personally experienced and learned and figured out, and knowing now what I didn't know the first time I headed out, uh, it can be, you, you can have such a great trip, such a great adventure. 
and go to so many places with so little money. So, thanks for listening, guys, and I hope some of that advice helps somebody out there. And great travels.